So I said I wanted to explain all this kind of situation from the beginning right up to the end once and for all. Because uh, every time I try and come, every every time I try and explain it, there's always some kind of drama. If you notice that happens, that prevents me basically from getting all the information out. So that and happen. I haven't kind of conducted myself in some of the videos, kind of left anger take over. I used too much curse words, so now I want to explain it. This is just going to be part one. After this now, as I explain, I'm going to like bring documents, like so I'll, I'll show the documents as I explain. So, a little, so it's a little bit more clearer. And I just want to question, should these people remain like employed by Tusla? Should they, like, should Tusla himself be investigated? Should this TD in town pulling strings all over the fucking place? Should he be like left be voted back into power yet again by the glorified cronies that he's, he's had to surround himself by, which I don't believe is a reflection on his party, if I'm being honest with you. Then we have the Gary then like who's basically covering for him and this local traveller. Now we all know who this traveller is, not who you're gonna go into because it, this campaign that he's begun is kind of more or less stalking at this stage. But uh, that began the day after I was assaulted, um, July 2021. And even like today is the, oops, today is the 28th of October. And I reported an incident on the 23rd of September. I reported two incidents actually on the 23rd of September. One was uh, there was some dope in the car. I spoke about this in a previous video. I made a statement, but the Pulse ID was sent out automatically. I got the Pulse ID, I think, two days later on the same day. I was at the mountain G-Soccer, sorry, that morning, and they told me to report everything. So as I came out to make the statement about that dope in the car, here was this crowd, as usual, waiting inside the gallery the barracks, waiting for me, followed me all over town, kind of getting into the whole threat and stuff. I spoke about this already, I don't really want to go into it again. And then, um, basically, when I got home, then uh, I rang in the, I, I rang it in at 17 minutes past one of the day. Myself and my wife were here, the cars came down, they took a statement and um, we asked that it was put on the Pulse ID. They said uh, they said it would be put on the Pulse ID, that all things would be. That was the 23rd of September, I'm still looking for that Pulse ID now. This is the situation that's going on, the cars are bending over fucking backwards to cover for this person. Because this person more or less has the guards by the bollocks. After they swapped out whole summons, they breached my GDPR rights, they violated my rights with that and that was done on the behest of a TD if I'm being honest with you and it was that TD that dragged in a detective and kind of snowballed from there really but that's really what's going on but I really want to explain now the whole lot and the beginnings of all this so basically it began anyway I met my ex in 2008 I met her in the Ashery which is rehab there down in Wexford there she's from Dublin I was from Waterford and um, the, the person the person that was kind of that set us up in rehab is actually from waterford and his sister is a neighbor of my in-laws down in spring garden alleys now i'll get to all this later but like no one knew that everyone thinks that she was just some innocent bystander like and because she's one of the people that done this sexual shaming on me and it looked like she was just some kind of random person down there but it was actually her brother who set me and my ex up in rehab in 2008 and she was concerned about everything that I had heard in the group regarding the whole which she wasn't painting in a very nice life that's all I'm going to really want to say about that but uh, so she had an agenda to remove me from being around that area being honest with you so so I met my ex in rehab in 2008 we moved down to Tramore afterwards got her pregnant a week or two literally afterwards I think um we came down to try and work she was warning her that she wasn't to work for uh, two or three years or something i didn't really understand why i'm being honest with you but she had this, this weird craving for kind of validation and kind of people pleasing and at the time now i didn't see this it's only when i went down to try and work and this became such an issue that it was kind of really did become an issue that kind of i ended up moving out because like her whole life was dictated. She was a hairdresser. She was running around trying to please everyone, cutting the hair. Like she was gone morning down the night. Um, anyone out in Tramore will know I had the kids day in, day out, every single day. And uh, I was actually a good father to the kids. I was also a good mother to the kids, if I'm being honest with you. 
and this went on for years and when I got to the stage then where I ended up moving out basically so I got me own apartment so Waterford Council put me in an apartment up on the Tramwood Hill I was there right and I had an altercation with a, a neighbour there and his, na his name was Tony Kelly and uh, the reason I give his name is because that person was later put in beside me mother uh, further down the road I'll explain the whole situation with my mother further down the road but I just want to remember just remember like there was an altercation between me and him he basically said something to the kids one day and I didn't take kindly to it he was forever moaning he was saying that the reason I moved in that I was on condition that I only had the kids two days a week and I had the kids every day of the week and they were making noise and he couldn't sleep and that was more or less Catherine O'Brien then of Ras Waterford Council she found me another apartment over in Apollonian Apartments in Tramwater and she moved me over there to basically break me and him up like who wouldn't have like who wouldn't be like you have someone like fucking speaking to the kids you know what I mean and he's a nasty piece of work and being honest with you so that was it we moved out of there so then I was only there a couple of weeks and me ex then would get the kids to ask me to move back and to be honest with you I'd never I never was never able to say no to the kids so I'd end up moving back then I moved out another time and again she got the kids to ask me to move back again after a week or two so again I moved back but uh, it was the same whole seeking this weird validation kind of people pleasing I won't be a people pleaser so kind of I felt this very kind of I felt the weird to be honest with you we both jumped into a relationship too quick I found out pretty quick that not only did I not love her I actually like didn't really even like her as a person if I'm being honest with you and the only thing we had in common was taking drugs if I'm being honest with you this went on for a, a couple of years where I was around the kids and she was running around like pretending she was fucking this high and mighty like trying to please everyone and anyone and that's what was going on. I moved back out again then so we agreed then uh, she got the kids to ask me to move back in. We, I agreed on the condition that I wanted to go and do my own things so uh, I wanted to go and do a psychology course in a uh, trauma. So uh, I signed off for the psychology course. This was a uh, um, two thousand and thirteen. It was at this stage. So I signed up for the psychology course. I was being taught by Pat Carey. You know, on Tramore TV. And when we were in there, he was like, I know, when he was one on one with certain students, then he would mention that he was a Baha'i, B A H A O I. Now this is it's a religion. I didn't know it was religion at the time. He tried to kind of. He tried to mention it in passing to me once or twice. I kind of left it go over my head. I didn't know what it was. So I kind of wasn't really interested in being honest with you. I, I heard him like speaking one on one to people about this religion. Saying that like he and his wife were doing it up in his house. And like we should come up and give it a go sometime. They call it spiritual nourishment. Is what this is they tell you all the good parts they don't even say it's a religion they tell you it's just the spiritual nourishment and they don't tell you they have their own laws they have their own sentences they they use manipulation sexual slander they use all these things they believe by using these tactics that it means getting them closer to their greater goal which is to spread this so-called religion so i was explaining to the tutor there pat carry now i had known pat carry i was in youth with him actually um, when I was like 16 I think so it was many years ago and he was the woodwork teacher in there he was a bespoke woodwork teacher and I was explaining to him that I felt I was in a relationship with a woman that I didn't love and if I didn't stay with her that she was going to take the kids back to Ballymont in Dublin which was always our threat and it was always my worry so he was asking me more and more about it and kind of and I was explaining she was in a woman's group in Tramore and he was just kind of sitting me for information if I'm being honest with you. So I explained which woman's group she was in. And three or four days later his wife turned up pretending to be hanging up flyers outside the woman's group. She was hanging around for an hour outside because I've been told by somebody else. Just basically hanging around so she got talking to me ex. She signed us up as a family. She gave it a whole spin that this would help like struggling relationships and there was free play dates. All this kind of thing. Again, there was no talk of this being a religion or anything. So she signed us up. So uh, on the very first time we went up to the house, it was up in Clarenwood. Knocked at the door, went in. Obviously, I got a shock when I seen the tutor was there because I didn't 
because she had signed the sub to the wife so I didn't I didn't know it was the tutor's house so kind of he explained then that his wife was part of the HSC and kind of made us a little bit more at ease kind of and the kids enjoyed the play dates my ex's friend who was also on my psychology course she had it actually kind of came up and started attending with her two kids and her two kids hung around actually with our two kids so they were kind of there was a mutual kind of play thing going on so the kids like being around each other so like weeks kind of turned into months where we were going up to these kind of like i don't know what would you call them kind of prayer meetings and stuff where you you would be told you'd be speaking about certain topics and stuff like and it turned out that his wife was actually a psychologist for the HSE and uh, she was giving out books, workbooks like to go stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and when you finish stage 1 you move on to stage 2 when you finish stage 2 you want to stage 3 but uh, some of the questions that were in the book you're supposed to fill out and then the books were given back to her and I felt basically she was just profiling people basically gathering information about us and I always felt there was something weird, there was a constant attack on the Catholic Church and they would look down their nose and kind of like people using drugs or people drinking. I was always questioning like, if you're all high and mighty, like where's your work for like any kind of charity or stuff like that and obviously this didn't, didn't go down too well. But my ex was like a lap dog and I'm being honest with you, she was giving all the attention in the world and she loved it. The kids kind of enjoyed the play dates at the start of them, I'm being honest with you. So kind of they like this. So I went along with it because I didn't want my kids going back to Ballymun, if I'm being honest with you. But uh, I always felt I knew the woman. I couldn't put my finger on it, but I kind of I just had a feeling that I knew this woman from somewhere. This woman was morning and night down our house then after a couple of months. She was there like every single fucking day, dropping some kind of booklet down or leaflet down. She was giving me ex's private classes and this. At the time, I started to kind of slowly back away. I was having reservations about this kind of thing because I know how cults work and the whole tendency of the positive and negative reinforcement. And like I found it very kind of uneasy the way they left certain parts of this uh, religion out. They slowly started to mention the religion then. And I was talking to my ex's friend about it. And she kind of had the same reservation. But as I said, she was down the house morning, down the night couldn't get rid of this woman and I've forgotten her man and as I said she was employed by water for Tuslip I think it was July 2014 there was a day out and announced down Kilkenny College <clears throat> they rent out at Kilkenny College for the weekend this Bahoy group and uh, it, was, it was told it was explained to us it was a kids day out so uh, so obviously my ex signed us up as a family obviously eager to please so we went down and when we got down there then there was kind of like there was shops down there selling all this Bahai merchandise kind of stuff there was lectures regarding this Bahai thing then and then it was sprung on us now it wasn't a day out it was actually a weekend and it shows your commitment by staying if you stay the weekend it shows your commitment to this joke now you weren't allowed to question any of the teachings of this religion because you were looked at as being a non-believer and true believers there was they basically follow this stuff blindly without having they have complete faith in it and this is the way it was kind of explained to us anyway and the kids were brought off to make pizza and i didn't want to be separate from the kids when being honest with you kind of like felt a bit weird down there anyway but the kids were brought up brought off the kids were brought off and when they came back then i asked them what was it like making pizza and they said to me that they weren't allowed to make the pizza unless they repeatedly chanted this prayer over and over again while they were kneading the dough. Now, that's just conditioning. Like, so I kind of had a major issue with that, if I'm being honest with you, and kind of just the multiple lies leading up to that. My ex's friend, as I said, she was in the psychology class with me. Um, she had an issue with it as well, and like, I want to stay in the weekend there. The kids didn't want to stay the weekend there. I'm my ex's friend, she didn't want to stay the weekend. The only per person I wanted to stay the whole weekend was obviously my ex because, I don't know, as I said, she was like a laptop to these people. But when we came back, I had a huge argument with her. I explained to her the whole kind of like positive and negative reinforcement, how these cults work, how they kind of like ostracize you. We weren't allowed to mix with that outside our family unless it was to bring people in 
she was constantly pushed at me like she'd invite her hair clients because she had loads of hair clients out in Tramor. and I was saying that this is the real agenda because it was it was evident like and even her friend was even like rolling her eyes and I'd roll the eyes of her some of the stuff that was being like spoken about it was like some of the stuff was just egotistical nonsense now if I'm being honest with you I'm trying to do this now without many edits and without cursing or getting worked up so you have to bear with me I suppose but uh, after we came back from Kilkenny I said I had enough of this like bullshit basically I seen it for what it was so did me ex's friend she seen it for what it was and she started to slowly back away I said I was leaving so what they done then is they started having kind of like play dates with the kids and days out and stuff and obviously I wanted to go because I wasn't bow high and they were constantly telling me I was only a matter of time before I'd convert my ex had converted at this time and then we were going to get intimate one time and she stopped us and she said that she wasn't allowed to get intimate with me because I wasn't a bow high and if I wanted to if we wanted basically to have sexual relations that I needed to convert to the bow high so basically they were just trying to use sex to get me to kind of convert to this uh, but I wouldn't not for God no man because I seen it for what it was and like it was just so controlled like on one of the meetings up there I used to play the guitar up there uh, with her husband like and this Anne Carey who was the main recruiter this is the wife of my tutor and like she'd walk into a room and click her fingers like and everyone have to stop talking this kind of stuff like or you'd be there talking to someone and the people behind you saying, oh, you wouldn't mess with Anne. Like, imposing a kind of pecking order. This stuff got really, really weird. Am I being honest with you? Like, I'm going to, I noticed all the people in it, they had some kind of, like, some kind of training in psychology and kind of, like, and I found a whole kind of leaving out that they had their own laws and their own sentences and they would literally like laugh at the Irish laws and being honest with you, that they were there to be broken, manipulated and kind of once you like, once you interact with in civil law, there's really nothing that the guards can kind of do and no one's going to bring a civil case because they don't have the money. Now this is a person employed by Waterford Hustler, remember, that's pushing So as I said, after Kilkenny, that was in... Uh, July 2014 we came back they tried everything in that to try and get me to rejoin I was still doing the psychology course that I was saying because I started that in 2013 and when I came back from Kilkenny I couldn't even look at the tutor because I seen it for what I was down there so I left the I left the psychology course I think I had three weeks left or something and they offered me to come back that he would give me the grade if I just come back and sit in the class all this kind of stuff I said no way I didn't want them around me, I didn't want fucking her around me, I didn't want her in the house. It was unbelievable what happened then as my ex started going up to their house to have these private meetings because like, I really had fallen out with these people, I didn't want them around me. So she would go up to the house up in Clarenwood and have her like private meetings and she came back and told me one day um, she had issues with her own mother growing up. I'm not going to get into it basically, I don't really need to, but uh, she confided uh, she confided with this psychologist her issues that she had with her mother and it kind of led to her seeking this validation from people if i'm being honest with you and uh, it was what the, it was what this psychologist want if i'm being honest with you like she had her wrapped around her finger from there on in it's what like as a psychologist for someone to confide this kind of information to you and uh, they, as i said they tried as I said, they tried everything and that to get me back. Her husband came down and met me one time and he thought I was at the leaving because me mother would have been very religious, like Catholic religion. And kind of he assumed that it was because of this. And he told me that his wife was actually from Kerry and that her whole family had turned her back on her over this religion, believing she was in a cult. And this is the woman employed by Tussley and Waterford. And this is a way of spo supposedly making me feel better, telling me that they were my new family and all this kind of stuff. So, like, I basically told them where to go. And I left. Um, but as I said, I was cut out of the kids' life. Even though I was living in the house with the kids, the kids would be, like, brought off by these people. But I couldn't go because I wasn't, like, a bad boy. This is what they were trying to do to make me rejoin because I wanted to be around the kids. Because I was after bringing up the kids for, like, eight years or something. Like day in, day out, I miss the kids, if I'm being honest with you. And uh, that's the way it was. 
and then we further got sick towards the end of 2014 and um, my ex was there playing the dose and girlfriend every time my family called she'd be there all over me being all supportive and they were like I really had an issue with this religion and kind of like I didn't really say and they want to borrow my own family with this as you wouldn't got to a stage then where kind of I moved in I got sick of hearing about this bad boy because my ex then was trying to like convert me and I'm being honest with you like and t basically telling me that we can have sex basically if I convert and all this kind of stuff and so I just I ended up moving out and being honest with you only in sweet had another apartment up on Apollonia Suites and when I moved back I kept that apartment so I moved back up there and then my father got really sick so I was the kids inviting me back down to the house again so I went down just for the kids if I'm being honest with you and unfortunately then my father passed away in January 2015 and um, I went there, I was down staying in the house for a couple of months now again at this stage and um, and my father's funeral then, uh, my ex, she never brought the kids to my father's funeral then. and then my father had a really close relationship with both the kids I have to say, he was a great grandparent but she never brought the kids and instead she chose to bring Aunt Carrie and Pat Carrie from this religion. Now remember I didn't speak to these people. I had a serious fall in there. My family didn't know of these people. Do you know what I mean? And the reason she didn't bring the kids. Because the kids would have known like. What are you bringing these people for? He doesn't speak to you. So that's why she didn't bring the kids. But what she didn't count on was her. Her friend who was in my psychology class. And was a uh, kind of after been in this religion. She came to the funeral. And she was questioning like. Like what the bloody hell are these people doing at the funeral like. She would have seen, she would have known how much disdain I had for these people, that I hated these people. And they were at the funeral. And to be honest with you, I wasn't able to read out my father's eulogy at the graveside. And I'm being honest with you, I broke down. And I don't want to talk too much about my father's funeral and stuff. But, but that's what happened. And after the funeral then, and after the funeral then, I seen Aunt Carrie and she was speaking to two people at the funeral. And I twigged in who this person was. Remember I was at the saying that I, I thought I knew her. Well, I did know her. I'm going to just explain briefly how I knew her, right? So several years before that, I was asked to sit in as a witness there, right? There was someone in um, care of Tusla. Let's just put it that way. I have to kind of tread carefully around this. I was asked to sit in those allegations of sexual misconduct in a house by in a house of Tusla, I just put it that way. And um the the interview took place out in Arkeen on the left hand side. As you go in Arkeen entrance on the left hand side and them small buildings on the left. I was there. There was a woman there, I assume she was a female Bangarda by her whole kind of just by her whole kind of demeanour and the way she tend to run, run things. The person was there, the victim basically say, and then there was a social worker called James Kennedy and he drove me and kind of the victim out. And uh, the meeting lasted about 90 minutes and there was all kind of like questions and kind of not going to get into all those kind of questions and stuff. At the meeting then, I heard how the allegations were actually six to seven weeks ago. So I questioned, why, why are you only looking into these allegations now? They should have looked into it immediately. And I was told there was a shortage of staff. I was told that by James Kennedy, actually. The next day, then, I rang up James Kennedy to find out what the Bangarla, what her next approach was. I was informed she wasn't a Bangarla. She was a psychologist of Tusla, implied. So I kind of had a serious issue with that. The so of Tusla being investigated by another employee of Tusla in the same county. So I had a serious issue with this, as you could imagine, right? I was also informed then that uh, this psychologist had decided to keep it internal, that she would be keeping the guards out of it. Against my wish, I wanted the guards obviously involved. I wasn't happy already with the six to seven weeks wait. And uh, she decided to keep the guards out of it. She also decided that the person that made the allegation was deemed troublesome and that young girl was moved away to another home. And she basically covered up for Tusla and Tusla basically left them like a sit with Tusla because Tusla hadn't acted in time. So a sit with Tusla 
to have their actions covered up. So she covered up Tussle. And we're at a present moment down there was Tussle is covering for her, if I'm being honest with you. So that's basically what happened. But that psychologist turned out to be the same psychologist who roped my ex and my family with religion and Carrie. And like that breaches so many code of conducts and code of ethics and like it should be investigated. Like regardless of all the stuff that's going around and all the arguments with me, do you not think that that should be investigated? Just even to even to disprove them, never mind. Never mind proving me right, like, but even to disprove me and show that like, like that this doesn't go on within the Irish system, and uh, and you'll see that this does go on, and she should be struck off. She should be investigated. The tussle of workers that left her do what she done should also be investigated. But that's the kind of main kind of like crux, as they say, of all of this, and that was the beginning of that. So obviously, after the funeral, I told me ex that I knew who Anne Carrie was, that I remember who she was, I knew everything. Obviously she left and ran straight up to Anne Carrie, told her everything, that I knew everything. So obviously this was a serious issue. I told her I was complaining Anne Carrie to the Med Irish Medical Board, which is would give her the self to be a doctor. I told her I was complaining her husband for inviting students up from the classroom up to his house, which is totally against the code of conduct and breaching the code of ethics also so obviously i was deemed a high risk so i know how crazy this must sound and then um, yeah so you can imagine how crazy this is because i know how crazy that sounds like but that's the truth i know she was involved in a previous case i was the witness in the case and then i recognized her at my father's funeral and basically the shit hit the fan, if I'm being honest with you. And that was in 2015. And then my ex told me, the day after I buried my father, she told me that she was going to Dublin for a chillax, whatever it was exactly. And she fucked off up to Dublin. And uh, she told me to be gone out of the house by the time she was back in fucking two or three weeks or something. I was going anyway, if I'm being honest with you. But I had, had to tell my family that she had a wedding here, up in Dublin, because... She was at the film and she was draped all over me. So like she was doing this whole pretending to be my girlfriend and like all this kind of stuff. And I knew she was only trying to lure me back into this religion, but I never told my family this. So like they were wondering why she took the kids and fucked off the very next day after I buried my father. But that's her nature. So she went off up to Dublin and I moved back to my apartment. It was a couple of then the heat of arguments through text messages and phone calls and all this kind of stuff. So I got pissed off and then I went in February, my father passed away in January 2015. So I went into the courts in February 2015 and I began all legal proceedings for custody, visitation and guardianship. And uh, as crazy as that sounds, that's all true. And they, they would be paperwork in the HSC that shows that that's true. So they could easily pull the paperwork. I'll try to get this paperwork. <coughs> And they said that the victim, because he's over the age of twenty one now, that I don't have any I don't have any authority <coughs> sorry. I don't have any authority to pull the paperwork or get the paperwork. So they basically blocked me from getting the paperwork. If I'm being honest with you. So like that's water for Tussler fight all over. So as crazy as that story sounds that's all 100% true. And how could I make up something like that when you think about it? And that's literally only the icing like, on the cake. And that's basically the beginning of all of this. Of kind of, I was lured into that bow high shit. If I'm being honest with you, through the psychology course that I was attending in Tram or ETB. And uh, the two people recruiting it, like Anne and Pat Carly, husband and wife. You'll see later, I actually complained him to Tramore TV. I think it was around 2020 or something. I was at the main complaint in 2016. And someone informed me that the person that I made a complaint about him was actually a friend of his. So I went back and I inquired, uh, did they follow up my complaint as protocol? And they gave me a letter that someone had written in 2020, but they wrote in a biro 2016 on the top of it and they photocopied it to make it look like it came from 2016 so um, I pointed that out and I asked to see the original 
and it, they basically told me to stop contacting them. So like the action alone speaks for itself. But they said on the letter then that they, they, they spoke to him about inviting students up to his house and um, speaking about this religion. And he basically said that, and he, he basically said, he basically said that the students inquired to him about the religion that he and his wife just happened to be like recreating for this obscure religion, the Bowie religion. They'd be very few yet to hear about this. So what are the odds of the students in that class inquiring about a religion that he's recruiting for and his wife is recruiting for? Like that like it's an, an insult to someone's intelligence, to be honest with you. And they also said any conversations regarding going up to his house and this religion. They happened at lunchtime and as they happened at lunch lunchtime, Tramwater E T V wasn't responsible for it. Well, actually, he would have been paid at lunchtime, and they happened on the premises of Tramore ETV, so they would have been, like, liable for all of this kind of stuff, and he would have had to follow, like, the correct guidelines and code of conducts and all this kind of stuff. So, basically, his job should be fucking removed as well. But to try and, like, to try and say that the students, like, randomly asked, like, about this religion that he and his wife just happened to be like recruiting for like that's an insult to someone's intelligence if i'm being honest with you and like the hsc are totally you can pull that paperwork regarding Anne carrie and that meeting that happened out in our king several years before that i can't say the person's name that was there i, I can say with the social workers it was james kennedy it happened on the building on the left hand side i was living in the yellow road at the time I was collected by James Kennedy and the person was as well from my home up there and we were brought out there. And then basically tussled on fuck all because they left to go for six or seven weeks before they even investigated. So the only thing they could really do was kind of say there was nothing there and cover it all up. Which is exactly what this psychologist does. This or done. This egomaniac, which is what she is. I'd explain further and further about this, but that's how I end up in that Baha'i religion, and that shows you how much. But that explains the whole breaching of the code of conduct. Like she, as an employee of Water for Tussle, she's subcontracted. She's a doctor, and she's subcontracted by Water for Tussle. She should be investigated at the very least, even if it's. Like, not to prove me right, but just to prove me wrong to say that, well, look, this didn't happen. And uh, by doing so, then you will show that I'm actually telling the truth. And you see that as messed up as this stuff is, I'm actually telling the truth. And then the reason they won't do it realistically is because any case that she had had a hand in would have to be kind of re-examined. So this is why Tussler won't do it. So basically, Tussler are covering from her. She's covering for Tussler. And that's what's going on. Sorry, my alarm. And basically, her husband teaching psychology. That was his first year teaching psychology out there. And he basically, he went too far by inviting too many students up to the house. There were several other students actually came to the house. But he only came the once. They seen it for what it was and they left. My ex had to be the kind of like number one student as always. Had us roped into this kind of. I used to just sit there, say nothing, if I'm being honest with you. I kind of like, I just wanted my kids to stay in Tram Ward. There's a better quality of life than living up in Ballymun. It's no reflection on Ballymun. I'm just kind of, it's a better quality of life out in Tram Ward, no matter what way you look at it. So I done what I had to do, which is to try and keep the kids here in Waterford. And she just ended up sucked into that. She's still up around North Dublin there now, offering, doing her hairdressing and offering free counsel. Now, she, the reason she's offering free counsel is to roll people into this religion. They kind of, how would you say it? They weed out, who, like, which people are more susceptible. Like, there's a lot of ex addicts up in Dublin, like, and they want to replace the addiction with, with something, whether it's fitness or some people, God and spirituality. Like, it changes, but, like, it's a breeding ground for cults, I'm being honest with you. And uh, that was originally planned for Tramwell. And she was supposed to invite all her hair clients up one at a time and all this kind of shit until basically I started out in the whole thing and then I was going to out to husband and wife 
and I kind of like fucked it up from being honest with you and ever since then this is the whole punishment since then and they're trying to like get me to leave and I'll speak more now the next time from 2000 and so that brings it up to 2015 and how I met my ex in rehab in 2008 and how I ended up doing the psychology course in Tramore and how I ended up in this Baha'i religion thing and how I ended up leaving. So basically the court proceedings then started in February 2015. So I start explaining them from the next video onwards. But like as I said from the next few video onwards I'll bring paperwork now just to show you that what I'm saying is actually true. And this story only gets more and more crazy. Thanks. Hopefully I didn't curse too much.